Hi, I'm Melody Maya, and I talk about everything transgender and lesbian life related that you would really like to know about, but are afraid to ask. Along those lines today, I have a very special guest with me. I'm Casey, and I make transgender related content as well. We actually talked about the surgery, quote unquote, on her channel, and she had some great questions to ask me, stuff I've never talked about before. So make sure to head over to her channel. You are a transgender woman, but you aren't currently on hormone therapy, correct? Right. And you also have not had surgery, and you're not interested in having surgery. Right. So those are all interesting things that no guest on my channel has ever had a combination of before. It's definitely an interesting mix that even trans individuals have a hard time grasping. Yeah. I'm kind of non-op, at least off, right yeah. now. I'm totally one of those people that's like, if 10 years later Casey changes her mind, I'm open to it. But I can't decide that for now. And I am so glad I ran into you because we are at VidCon <laughs> as we speak. We went to an LGBTQ networking opportunity that they have here for creators and, and we ran into to each other. I approached Maya yeah. because of her t-shirt and I was like, here's a business card. And then Maya talked my ear off for an hour and a half. Guilty as charged. <laughs> and when you get me going, I will talk and talk. If you ever catch me in real life, make sure that you have an hour set aside. But I happen to be wearing my trans t-shirt. I'm so happy I actually worked for something useful besides getting hit on by a creepy guy, Carl's Jr. the other night. You're not on hormone therapy now, but from what I understand, you were at one point, correct? Yes. What happened to okay. convince you to get off of them? I was on HRT for about a year, I started my senior year of high school, I kind of was like all in. My family likes to say balls to the wall. That was deep. my transition. <laughs> So I went to a therapist and she actually had worked with one of my friends that actually went under SRS, the surgery. I found an endocrinologist that actually was a pediatric endocrinologist that had worked with transgender patients in the past. He made a special exception for me. A little weird, flag one, um, anyways. <laughs> we had talked through the options. I have had previous experiences with kidney stones. With that medical condition, I was afraid to be undergoing some sort of an oral treatment. We decided to go with patches, which is a very unique decision. Decision. Most people I know either go with pills or injectables. Right. And then out of nowhere, I literally have this rash on my body, all this skin that like almost feels like eczema. The blocker was a bit of a delay. He had to order it. I was just on estrogen and no blocker. The only way I can really describe it is like cats and dogs, like just clawing back and forth at each other. Your body and was fighting to restore the yes, testosterone. It made me so tired. I was sleeping like 15 hours after getting on the, the blockers, I started to have problems with the suppressed appetite. I would forget to eat. Mm -hmm. I had never experienced that in my life. Having that happen kind of set me back a little bit. I not only had that, but I also had a very unique experience where my significant other, back then we were meeting for the first time. We wanted to engage in sexual activity because right. it had been nothing that we would experienced okay. together. Quick pause, your significant yeah. other is a man. Cisgendered. I actually was his boyfriend before transitioning. Like, we've known each other that long. Would he have said to have identified as a gay man? No. Okay. He'd only been with cisgendered women. Now identifies himself as pansexual. He likes feminine looking individuals. He's very, very accepting and loving. I was having difficulties, not necessarily with arousal, but with the, the complete completion portion of it. Right. This was, is like my channel where we could say orgasm. Sorry. Can... <laughs> I, I, it's new to me even talking about it. And I'm like, I, can understand. I feel weird. Like, you do whatever outing him kind you do, of. You do whatever feels comfortable for you. I ended up feeling like I wasn't giving him what he needed. Put me through a sort of emotional state of like, am I enough? And I already felt that way because like I can't give him a child. I know he's a family guy and yeah. that's what he wants. And ultimately I do too. So we're talking about guilt over not having an orgasm and how that was going to make him feel. Yeah. Guilt over the fact that you would not be able to have a biological child with him. Yeah. All of this while your hormones are raging because yeah. your testosterone and your estrogen are fighting against each other. Yeah. Right. I also personally had the desire to go on estrogen as a way to prove to not only myself but to the world that I was ready for transition and to be yeah. identified as she. Before being on hormones, I wasn't unhappy with my body, my genitalia, mm -hmm. or my lengthiness, or my face. I was pretty happy. The sex drive dropping oh. tremendously going on to hormones kind of terrified me because the last thing I need as a young in my 20s individual was for me to not be able to enjoy a, a sexual interactions, mm -hmm. especially with my significant other, and especially when what I have is enjoyable for me and for my uh, a significant other. It was causing problems and tension within the bedroom. Getting off of hormones was kind of my way of being like, let's just see 
what happens by getting off of them. Let's see if you feel better, if you feel happier, if like sexual arousal comes back. If you decide to come back to it, that's for future you to decide, but there's yeah. just too many unknown factors right now. Wow. Anyway, sorry, that was like- We need to unpack that because there's a <laughs> lot going on there, like I was saying a little bit earlier. It sounds like you partly got on estrogen to be seen as validly female. Transgender people come in all different kinds of flavors. We aren't all one kind of like binary, you know, okay, all want to have all the parts and all the bits. Your gender expressing as a woman is all it really took for you to relieve the dysphoria you did have. Does that sound Exactly. Like okay. I it definitely was one of those things like putting on a dress and makeup and being presented and identified as female really was all the icing on the yeah. cake that I needed. You can do these things and probably I'm gonna guess that you're usually seen as a cisgender woman. Most of the time, yeah, yeah. pretty possible. It's mostly when the voice starts coming into play yeah. that I ever experience any problems. And the hormones wouldn't change that anyway. My only experience that was similar to what you experienced, I did go on Zoloft for a little bit of time. I noticed that I wasn't able to orgasm anymore. I got off Zoloft. It drove me nuts <laughs> that I could not have an orgasm. Yeah. I mean, I was that was just not acceptable. And that was kind of my experience with even just estrogen and, and it being di like different. It might have just been a fear thing. Like if I rode the wave, I might have gotten more used to it. But I was afraid to completely lose something that really wasn't a problem. I am who I am right now and I'm yeah. content with where I am currently in transition. If that were to change for you, you'd be perfectly okay with that too. Future Casey wants it. Future Casey's gonna get it. Very I've only well. known you for a little bit. It, but I totally believe that. My doctor literally told me as I was saying I wanted to go off of hormones with my father in the room because I didn't feel comfortable doing it alone. You're going to regret this. And I was like, whoa, this is my body, my decision. That's a value judgment he should not be making. He said that a few times. He's no longer practicing, but I feel very pressed with these certain individuals on like, oh, everything's gonna change and when you get into your 30s, this range, you have to go into hormones before you're 25. Ultimately, it's my decision. You should respect that, even if it's not what you wanna hear. You're not really gonna change much from what you're seeing right here. I actually can notice my rib cage is growing a little bit. The barrel of it is coming a little bit bigger. It's starting yeah. to make certain dresses that used to fit not fit anymore. You stop growing as like with testosterone at around 25, 26. So yeah. I'm still in like a couple year loop, but I feel like I'm pretty stable with where I'm at. What's going on? On, I suspect with those these friends who are pushing you is validation for them. It's like this is the right. process. And this that's is the reason why I haven't talked about it. Yeah. Especially in an online format. Last thing I need is a bunch of my own community coming back and attacking me. Any variation from the oh you go on hormones and then you're gonna want to have surgery is always met with skepticism, not just from outside the community, but inside the community. I think another thing that might have triggered that response from them is they're both of a older age and have experienced experienced <laughs> things that they wish that they had like, done when they were like younger. Somebody. I know, yeah. They wanted it for themselves. Yeah. And it's not necessarily what's right for me. It's not about you, it's about them. You do want to gender present as a woman and right. you probably think of yourself as a woman, right. I'm assuming. But there's other aspects of life that could lie within a spectrum. Yes. As not only gender, but like expression of those. Just because you're trans doesn't mean you can't enjoy gay sex in the bedroom or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> well, let's just say penis, penis sex. And I know some people are very uncomfortable with that idea, but you know, mm -hmm. it's still an aspect of, right. of well, just real like, life. At the end of the day, the only people that really need to know about your sex life are you and your significant other. I don't feel like you owe it to anyone to ex have to explain that to them. Or anybody else's job to define it for you. Since you brought up sex, let's talk about sex, baby. Do you remember Remember that song? Let's talk about you and me. Oh, I feel so gratified. You were talking about like a reduced sex drive while you were on hormones. With a very young, attractive man, finds me very attractive. And I which, assume wants sex. Um, yes, exactly. So <laughs> like, if you're not into it, either you tough it out just for him. Not that it's not pleasurable even when yeah. you're not sexually like aroused. Yeah. Because it can be fun. It definitely was like beneficial for us if I was also in the mood more frequently. It's always a better situation when it's mutually beneficial. Yeah. Like you both want to be there and you both want to have sex. I'm not a blow up doll. <laughs> I want to be treated that way. I support your identity is not a blow up dog. Yeah. And how long were you on HRT total? It was about 11 months. It's been how long since you stopped? Okay. Two and a half, um, like three years. When I felt like my levels were restored, it just took longer. My brain changed and it took more to get me to orgasm. And it still does. Even with like self-pleasuring, it still takes a little bit longer. If I'm in the right mindset. It's like, but- Casey, I, I have some bad news for you. You're a woman. Oh no. <laughs> I think someone should. 
hormones are powerful things. They do change your body. And sometimes those changes are permanent and they should not be taken lightly. You better be fully educated before you go into something so serious. Yes. When you do have sex, do you have any limits or restrictions on like, don't no. touch me here, don't touch me no. there. You're perfectly okay with- Me and him. He is also perfectly willing to do those things with you, right? Yes. It's healthy to want to explore, especially yeah. in the bedroom. If there's anything either of us want, we have an open door policy on all of that. Sounds like you're, you've are you been very lucky to find somebody. I am blessed on so many levels yeah. with this relationship. It gives me hope. I mean, I hope it gives a lot of you hope out there that, you know, even for those of you who are pre-op and want the surgery, and of course, those of you who are not up as Casey is right now, that love is still possible. He's like, I love you the way you are. So the fact that like, I have no pressure from my significant other really allows me to feel like I can be myself. It is an important thing to not just transition and have lead our authentic lives, but to find love in those new lives. Its own kind of validation. A lot of us grow up feeling unlovable. Unlovable, yeah. exactly. And I'm engaged, so like I've been engaged for just over I'm two sorry, years. What? I did not know that. Oh, well, we're getting married. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. I'm like, <laughs> this is not your boyfriend, this is your fiance. My fiance. I think I can safely say that there's probably a lot of trans women out there who are very jealous of you, Casey, because you've really found a special guy. You can count me as one of those people. Although, of course, I'd be looking for a woman. Well, Casey, we're gonna leave it on the note of romance. Love is in the air for you and- Oh, it's, it's everywhere. And Love as you is not just in the air. <laughs> I just thought of like 20 jokes that I'm not gonna say. <laughs> Of course, I'm gonna have all of Casey's links, including her Instagram, all down below, as well as my own socials. So follow her. I did make a video on Casey's YouTube channel. The link for that was also down below. Go check that out. I talk surgery. I talk complications from surgery. It's really great. I got some clarity on stuff I didn't even know about. Please put your comments down below. Let me know what you think of finding love in the era of being transgender. If you have a dime to spare, please consider giving to my Patreon and supporting what I do. On that note, please like this video by giving it a thumbs up. Please share this video. Please subscribe and see you around the interwebs.